Previously on Analysis Complete. So I, I can kind of arrange some type of song and then hit play. Caster is going to try and fill the bars with the first few lines of Beethoven's Fifth. And I'm going to hit play. And you see Martin Sapp hold his ears before his head explodes. Okay, I'm done. I'm done. We're going. We're leaving. I'm heading north. I'm out of here. I'm done with this, 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 this this place. And at this point, I just want to see the uh, other twist ways that we're going to get fucked up on this planet. You know what I mean? You all see a figure running. They're running from you. And they look back, terrified. And you all can see quite clearly a face. A face that you've seen for the second time. The face of Cassidy Garland. You guys, episode eight of 12. I just want to check in. How do you feel this is going, Gail? Do you feel like there's a lot of time left or are you starting to feel the crunch? I mean, there's whatever time left. I'm just glad that I'm still alive. I thoroughly yep. expected to die by episode four. So, I mean, like we're I've lasted twice as long. Um, I'm feeling really good. Yeah. Yeah got all the time in the world because so i good. i'm in a we're in our own world literally okay yeah all right Raiden, do you are you starting to feel a little bit of time crunch like what are we doing for too much time or not enough time i think i think it's going to be the right amount of time i think we, we were put on the pedal right from session one and uh after we lost a few wounds we kind of like slowed it down a little bit and by we we're, we're referring to just your I, I, yeah just me that <laughs> just, is just you know the tank of the team yeah. and uh <laughs> Now we're just like on cruise control. Now we're just smooth sailing the rest of the way, hopefully. Yeah, there's probably not going to be any more combat. Until so that's a good we point. drive the car off of the, off of the, <laughs> off of the bridge. Smooth sailing from here. David, you feeling the crunch a little bit or? You know, compared to Hackway Heights, I'm not feeling the crunch at all, actually. Yeah. <laughs> Hackway Heights, I felt the crunch. But this, like, I, I feel like we, we have a, a destination... After this, it kind of feels like, oh, you know, after they kind of figure out the mystery at this building, they, they might want to just head back to the ship. But I'm also anticipating that, you know, whatever happens at this building might really j j change what our plans may be. So oh, we'll man. see. We'll see. <laughs> I ask these questions because I, I want a document of these, these answers <laughs> before we get into sessions. I see. You, you want to play it back for us? Like, you remember when you yeah. felt like this in session eight? Well, <laughs> look at how wrong you sound now. Before the stream, we found out that all three of the players are currently sitting at 11 stress, which means that if a panic were to be called, they have a 55% chance of failing. Did I math that one good? Yeah. Yeah. Officially. That's right. It's, it's, not it's officially more likely that we will fail. Yeah. All right. Let's do this. You can see the tree line of the forest. It's a huge change of scenery for you all because you've been on this, like, rocky, almost Martian-esque terrain for a few days now. It's all you've really kind of known. And you can see mountains in the distance towering over this forest of trees that are thick their, their root system creates these massive mounds and hills like uh, cypress trees on steroids. And Melanie Devantes, who's riding ahead of you all in the ATV, turns back and points forward. And you all see, as I said last time, for the second time, Cassidy Garland is running away from you all into the tree line. She is approximately... 200 yards away but you can tell from where you're at now that it's absolutely her her hair is longer she looks thin gaunt even but she's running and she's running scared into 
the forest. I take off my glasses and, like, wipe them. <laughs> George, off the ATV right now, please. Is that... is that Cass? It might as well be. George, off the ATV now. So you're you're calling right. for Melanie to stop the ATV. Did they did they uh come to us? She... They were did... riding ahead of you and they're pointing back at you saying, Do you see that? I thought they stopped too, but I don't know. Okay, so I, I thought they were closer. Uh yeah, I'll just They do were like a little ways little... ahead. I mean you can yeah. wave them down. I'll do a motion to like hurry back. Okay. Melanie Devontes circles back really quick. You say George, get off the ATV. Yeah, I do. Uh, Dr. Locke, Kester, mm-hmm. something's up. I, I'm going to go ahead and go into the tree line. Uh, does anyone have any other ideas, or I'm going to just go right in right in there with Melanie? Uh, n- n- no, yeah. T- uh, we'll, we'll run behind you. Can- yeah. yeah, yeah, sure. Just take your time. Uh, I'm not sure what the fuck's going on, but Melanie, go hit the gas. It almost seems as if she's afraid of us. Uh, yeah. You hop on the back. Rook, you're not even, like, this is Cassidy, girl, and you're not waiting to, like, discuss it. You hop onto the back of this ATV. Melanie revs it up and starts taking off the wheels, bumping over the rocks as you all are riding uh, towards this tree line well ahead of Locke and uh, Caster. George Asper left back with, with you all. As you are getting closer to the tree line, 100 yards away now, you hear the pop of a rifle and a bullet enters Melanie Devantes in front of you. It pushes her back off of the ATV into your chest. Rook, you're going to need to make a body save. Any additions here or is it just raw body? Oh my God. Oh my this God. This is like an athletics kind of deal. Can I add plus 10 to it? Yeah. Okay. So we have got a 41. She didn't make it, everybody. She wasn't to make it to the end. Oh, no, no. <laughs> Let's see what we got here. I should have taken her place. That's a 20. <laughs> Success. All right. So this is what you all see from a, a hundred yards away. As you guys are starting <gasps> to make it, you know, you can't. It's been a long day. You're You're moving at a pace, but the ATV is outpacing you by a lot. So 100 yards away from you all, in between where you are in this tree line, you see the ATV rear up and do a wheelie on its back two wheels as Melanie flies off and you see Rook tumble off behind her and the ATV does kind of like a backflip, like a gainer, and does a roll over the ground. Rook, you hit the ground pretty hard but managed to keep from taking any damage. And you can see immediately that Melanie Devantes has a bullet wound in her chest and her arm is definitely broken. The bone peeking out around the forearm and she is sputtering. Are we still in the ATV or... The ATV... You all separated from the ATV. The okay, ATV, so no, no seatbelts, okay. <laughs> yeah, no seatbelts. It was like a four-wheeler, right? So, like, everybody came off. Yeah. Uh, how far away is is, uh, is Melanie from me? Six feet away from you. Great. I am going to drag her body behind the ATV and use the ATV as cover. Yeah. You're, like, crawling. Grab a hold of her and you pull her. The ATV's on its side right now. Yeah. So you're kind of shouldering up against this ATV. I need... Dr. Freya Locke, I need Caster to give me a fear save. Dr. Locke, you're in the presence of an android, which means that you roll at disadvantage. Indeed, I do. Oh, man. I rolled a two and a 71. Uh, <laughs> I wasted so go ahead that and uh, take ye old stress. Caster, how do we do? I continued the trend where, like, when someone rolls something, one of us often rolls it too. I rolled a 20. <laughs> Zero. Oh, okay. and re- so you're good. Andrews don't get scared. They have high nah, high fear good. tolerances. Okay. So we just said what Rook's doing. What are you all doing? Wait, can we tell where the gunshot came from? So they're 100 yards away. Cass is, like, 200. And can, like, did it come from in front of them? Like, dead in front? To the left? To the right? Uh, our no, left no. or right facing them we can't tell not sure okay. no 
And we're not to the tree line yet. You're 100 yards from the ATV, and it's another 100 from the ATV to the to the tree line. There are rocks and boulders. I mean, it's it's feasible that you could find something nearby to hide behind if you if you wanted to duck down really quick. I kind of want to duck and weave behind boulders to try and get to them. Caster's going to run like 70 yards toward them and then if he's still <laughs> safe there he's going to like try and like kind of crawl the rest of the way once he gets closer to them. So you're booking it as yeah. hard as you can, as hard as your your android body can take you. You take off Dr. Freya Locke, you and George Asper duck behind a uh, jagged rock. But like I'm trying to get there. I'm just okay. not racing the like issue is, this, is. I I get is it. Is that over a certain amount of yards it levels out and becomes flat. Okay. Right? Because that's what they were driving over. Uh, how many yards? So about 50. You can get 50, 50 yards up trying to duck in and out of places. Okay. So once I get like behind that last boulder, take a deep breath and then book it. Okay. Yeah. So you get to there. Caster, you're running up. Gail, I need you to make some kind of speed check. Speed check. I'm not particularly Do you serious. have any skills you want to... I, yes. I doubt you have any that you could apply. Chemistry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Make it, give me a speed check. Pathology. And Caster, could you do the same, please? Yeah. Oh, eight. I made it. I made it. <laughs> you made an eight? What the hell's going on? That's a two and an eight? A two and an eight. I was okay. like, oh, this is going to be terrible. I had to double check it. <laughs> I got a 36, which is barely a failure. Barely That's what I was failure. rolling all last time, last session. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so here's what's going to happen, Caster. You're going to trip and fall. It's just going to take you more time to get there. Yeah, Gail, you're able to move up, and use you. You all are all able to see Rook pulling Melanie to the the ATV for cover. So you know that Rook's alive, but you also know that Melanie might be fucked up because yeah. he's having a dragger. How fucked up is she, Rook? She's bleeding out all over you right now. Where exactly? She like just she got shot in the chest, like in the yeah. chest area. It's not yeah, yeah. kind of hard to discern. Where where are her eyes? You know, is she like crazed? Is it like she just eyes are closed? Like or like what am her I seeing? Her eyes here? are staring straight ahead of her. So wherever you tilt her head, that's where her eyes are looking straight ahead. They're not necessarily looking at you. They're not looking at anything in particular. Just they're a thousand mile stare off into the distance and when you look at her eyes you start to see the veins in her eyes not veins whatever they are the capillaries are starting to fill with blood and her eyes look right now very bloodshot okay rook is going to go ahead and um slowly get up from his like kneeling position and he's going to grab melanie's collar just by the scrub of her neck and bring her up to her feet and hold the revolver up to her head and use her as a um like a like a meat shield essentially and rook at the top of his lungs is just gonna say stop this right now as he holds the gun up to um melanie's head just out into the forest line okay he's gonna go he's gonna leave cover dragging her by her but yeah, dragging her out into the open field, holding the gun up to Melanie's head. Stop right now, or I, or I blow her brains out. Sure. When you do that, another pop of the rifle goes through Melanie and hits you right in the chest. Boom. I believe you took the Kevlar vest. I did. Which has a little bit of armor to it. I want to say it's five. Yeah, five. So, I'm going to do some damage here. <laughs> oh, oh, no. Man. I'm panicking. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you will be, don't worry. Well, we know which way the bullet came from at this point, right? Sure. <laughs> or he oh, goes yeah. anyway. <laughs> so, I'll take, I'll take one of those off. Yeah. So, you're going to take 18 damage. Five of that is absorbed into the armor. So, that takes it to 13. Do you get any armor from using Melanism? Yeah. I, gave, no. I, I took one yeah. off. Oh, God. <laughs> I took one of the dice off for him. Uh, well, yeah, that's a wound for sure. Yeah, it is. 
This is exciting. Oh what table that is. I got you, man. Because I bookmarked it before we started this session. <laughs> that is a gunshot wound. Uh-huh. So you're going to roll a D10 oh, man. on the wound table, and it is not good. <laughs> oh, no. Have, let me just... Oh. <laughs> oh. You have, like, a... 30% shot of having something useful. Like, something yeah. not really bad. Looking at it right now, honestly, let's just let's just go. I'm just, I'm just trying to visualize a zero and one and two in my head. So let's just, let's just see. Yep, let's do it. What did I, what did I say? That's a two. You That's break two. your rib, which makes yeah. sense. It hits the Kevlar and it breaks one of your ribs. Oh my gosh. However, <laughs> Melanie Devantes is now dead. Mm. Which means I need everybody to make a panic roll. With a panic roll, our dear audience, players have to roll a d20. And they have to get above what their stress level is. And everybody's stress is 11 right now. So they have Because a... I failed my speed, should I have taken another stress? Yes, sir. So, yeah, I'm at 12. All so right. you're at 12. Yeah. I rolled a 13, us honest, which is David. one above yeah, my 12. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so you... Oh, that's right. You just failed a check, too. I just failed a check. So I, yeah, I have a, I had a 12 stress. All right, Dave is putting the, the camera on it. It's a natural one. That's a natural one. Nice. Are you serious? Yeah. All right. On the panic table, the best possible panic you can get is a one. Is a one. Is it? Because right. that means you are laser focused. You have advantage on all rolls for the next. <laughs> 2d10 minutes, which is 12 minutes. You are wow. advantage on every roll you take. That's You're amazing. dialed in. Melanie is dead. Your job is to protect these people. And now you are dialed in. <laughs> this is so great. And I mean, is his stress back down to two? It's like a release of the panic is a release of stress. No, but. Oh. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, no, it, it stays terrible. Rook, how you doing, buddy? Got a two on that one. Which oh. is a, you are anxious. You just gain a stress. So you just gain one stress. <laughs> All right. That's... So you've gained a couple of stress. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is, you are, dude. <laughs> this is getting so bad. I was so pumped about today. All right, Melanie Devantez explodes backwards. For you all looking, you see Melanie Devantez's chest blow open and Jeez. Rook hits the ground behind her. He, For a moment, he looks like he's also dead. But you then see him grab his chest and he's trying to suck air. He's had the, the the wind knocked out of him a little bit. This this bullet hits so hard. Which 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 way did it come from? So he was pointing in one direction, and the angle at which he flew back, mm-hmm. northwest. Okay, thank you. All right, you were talking against. That's all I want to know. Where Cassidy went into the woods, maybe eighty feet west of where she entered. Eighty feet west. All right, coming for you. <laughs> coming for you. <laughs> person with the gun. <laughs> All right, Caster, what do you want to do? You are laser focused. Uh, so how close am I to to Rook and Melanie at this point? You can make make it to them this turn. Yeah, I will army crawl up to to meet them and immediately start trying to like administer some sort of aid to Melanie, but just realizing she's dead. <laughs> yeah, she's fucked. <laughs> she she's in trouble. You go over to Melanie, and you can see that her chest is just wide open from whatever hit her, and Brooke is, like, starting to roll over on his side from from getting nailed by this bullet. Gail, Dr. Freylock, what do you want to do? I want to get up there as well. You're heading up there? Mm-hmm. All right. But I, I'm still booking. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. You start running. Mm-hmm. Give me another speed check. This terrain here is really what? rough. What? I succeeded last time. Why am I Why am I still making a speed check? Because that got you halfway there. I feel like I'm reading this one wrong. Okay, that is not a double zero. That's an eight zero. So 86. I feel. Okay, yeah. All you get is that you run and you also, you're, you're not going to get to them on this turn. That's it. Okay. The, the terrain here is pockmarked and difficult to run through. Okay. 
I'm slipping and sliding. Yeah. It's also, yeah, it's, and it rained just the day before. It's okay. gross. But you're kind of out in the open right now. Okay. Reading, what do you think? And Rook is, you can feel it in your chest. Something, something popped. And Caster has already made it to me. He's in between you and Melanie. He's, he's looking at Melanie first. He's about to come back to you. Probably. And we have the woods nearby as well. A hundred yards away. But it seems like that might be where the bullet's coming from. Right? It is absolutely where the yeah. bullet's coming from. Quick little perception check here as I look towards the other direction. Where is Dr. Locke and where is George Asper? She's behind. They're both behind you. They're like, they're coming up. Oh my God. We're all going to bunch up around this ATV. Oh man. That's right. It's intense, dude. I'm going to, I'm going to go ahead and, hmm, I don't know how, cause, cause the, the ATV is already overturned. You know, somebody who's pretty strong and they're made to lift things. Yeah. I, I'm just going to just out of panic, just r- make cover behind the ATV and not try to do anything else. Just haul ass to the ATV, find cover, get low, make myself as tiny as possible. Okay. Real quick, can I clarify yeah. again? Why did I succeed on a speed run and then have to make another one? And the first Caster one was to hide behind the to... rocks. Oh, I thought it was to get there quickly. Well, you said no. You said you were just trying to hide behind rocks. No, right? I said I was ducking and weaving and get and booking it. Which there. means that you're taking your time hiding behind rocks. Okay, so okay, so that's what it is. Yeah, All right. it just Thank takes you. longer Thank to get you. behind I just needed rocks. that clarified because I was like, wait a second, what yeah. the fuck? He's running <laughs> right. in a straight line. You okay. were trying okay. to serpentine, right? Okay, yes, yes. Does that make sense? Yes, thank you. No worries. So, where was I? Okay, so, Dr. Frey Locke, another bullet pops. Okay. And this one connects with a section of ground right next to your feet. Okay. They just missed you. I have not necessarily gotten a good look at the damage that was done to Melanie and and uh, Rook yet. Is it right. obvious that this was a big explosion from this hit near me? Wait, what do you mean? Was what a big explosion? Was like was it was it a big caliber bullet? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. It, yes, it will fuck okay. your day up. Okay. I mean, you okay. can tell that it's not whatever's hitting them is knocking them off their feet. Mm-hmm. So yes, okay. that was going to be you. Okay. So they missed. It's your all's turn again, starting okay. with Caster. What do you want to do, Dave? <gasps> oh. I'm hoping you thought of what I thought of. <laughs> I you guys my... are welcome to talk to each other oh. in between these. You don't have to. Oh. You, can, you can say something if you want to. David, br- bring her body. <laughs> bring, her, bring her body? If you can, I mean, you're already there. I don't know. Just David, do something. I don't know. Okay. Caster... <laughs> Caster is going to. Uh, is Melanie maybe like wearing like a white shirt or some something white that I can like kind of rip up and and try and make like a bit of a white flag? Uh, it's not white, but I mean, it, I mean, it's red now. Yeah, yeah, I figured, I figured it'd be a bit red now, but red like blood. some sort of white white clothing to uh, just kind of rip up and. Sure. Caster... Let's say she was wearing like a white tank top. Yeah. And Caster's going to stand up, and with his, like, hands, like, fully outraged, he's just going to say, We mean you no harm! And he's going to, like, slowly just kind of, like, kind of walk slowly towards the clearing. Oh, man. Oh, man. He'll, uh, look back and just say to Rook, You've spent so much time protecting us, it's time for me to protect you. Oh, man. (laughs) No! (laughs) Uh, Jay, Jay, I'm just wondering, did Rook see any sort of muzzle flash? That that last time when you were both standing up? Yeah, you did. What's the range? How far away are they? If you can get to the tree line, you can get to them. You know exactly where to go. So it's 100 yards away. If you get on this ATV, you can get it pretty fast. If you try to run it, you're out in the open. Okay, okay. On On my next turn. Dr. Locke? What do you want to do? I am trying to get to Melanie and Rook. You get there. Okay. Can, do I have time to do anything else? Yeah. Okay. He is up against the ATV. She is obviously exploded. I turn to him and say, are you okay? Are you okay? And start scanning him with my med scanner. Yeah. You're scanning him with a med scanner. It's going to take a little bit for it to 
to give you a reading, mm -hmm. but the way he's moving, you can assume, and you can see on his Kevlar vest where this like bullet is smashed up. Mm -hmm. It's flattened like a silver dollar on his chest. Okay. And you can probably tell he's probably got a broken rib. Okay. Hey, you need to be still. I think you might have really done some damage there. <laughs> I do not take your advice. <laughs> <laughs> I knew you wouldn't. Because I'm trying to get to the ATV as soon as possible. You're there. It's on its side, so I'm going to look over to Dr. Locke and I'm going to say, help me get this up, please. Where's Asper? Where's the Where's the doc? Where's Doctor Asper? It's his turn now. <laughs> oh yeah, it's his turn now. What's he doing? He's around. Oh no. Yeah, I'm gonna back in Doctor Locke to help me because I know, I kind of have a feeling that I won't be able to do it by my lonesome, or maybe I can. Can he try um, to start pulling on it? You want to give a little? At, if you tell Doctor Locke to help you out, you guys might be able to okay. get it up together. Yeah, I mean, I'll help if he says, "Please help me with this," because it does seem like a good idea. Because his rib's broken, it's, it's not yeah. good. With the help of her, I will make you roll a disadvantage with your broken rib. Oh, you can give me, like, a strength check with athletics. At disadvantage? Uh, no, it's no, straight. No, if she's going to help, it'll be straight. Okay. Wow. Failure with a 47. Oh, man. That's, okay. Mm. Yeah. It shifts in your... You can feel the rib, like, floating around. Oh, jeez. It's not it's good. Straight. What? <laughs> I'm just describing the game. Slowly getting uh, folded into your lungs. Yeah. Yeah. You can feel like your rib tickling your your lungs. Oh, man. <laughs> it floats around. Is the ATV still on? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to just do a quick little body check over myself. And yeah, there's a the Kevlar vest is busted, but I wanted to... Rook is just going to clock the two grenades that are still strapped to the vest and just acknowledge that to himself oh yeah he has two grenades mm -hmm. okay caster you are walking forward and waving the flag and nothing is happening you're not getting shot at every step you take you feel could be the one that is where you take a bullet and every step you take is another step without getting shot i'm assuming you're moving slowly I'm moving slowly with, like, like one hand has the flag, the other hand is, like, fully fingers extended just to show how mm -hmm. that I have nothing in my hand. And I, I am going to start using kind of my, my binocular vision to try and, like, zoom in. Yeah, I gave you binocular eyes. Yeah, what was I thinking? you did. Yeah. You rolled okay. for it, I think. Yeah, you did. You did. You, did. you were like, let's see if you have binocular eyes. Yep, you have binocular eyes. I Great. did, yep. What are we going to do? So I'm going to kind of zoom in along the tree line just to see if I can see who's shooting us, uh, how many, uh, yeah. and yeah, all that. Tucked up in a tree, you can see a bearded man, oh, wild red beard, and he is looking at you through a scope with this rifle, and he lifts his head and squints, and you see him turn to his left as if trying to get some type of confirmation or information from somebody that you can't see. But when he turns his head to the left, you can tell this is Captain Wakefield. Mm, there he is. Oh. Stop, Captain Wakefield, stop. And does it seem like he's putting the gun down? Does it seem mm, like... No. No, okay, all right. He's very intense, and he looks Ca very intent on continuing this. Yeah, Caster's going to continue walking slowly towards him. Yeah. Dr. Locke, what would you like to do? Uh, I'm going to keep trying to get the ATV down because okay. I think that is our best way of getting to cover. And I kind of yell over my shoulder, George, help us. <laughs> and as you turn, before you can say, George, help us, George is there and the ATV is up. D what? 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 Oh, well, get on <laughs> and climb onto the ATV. Rook, what do you want to do? The ATV is upright. Caster is still marching forward slowly towards the tree line. Did Rook clock a potential uh, Captain Wakefield in the tree no. line? No. no. You guys still but don't know who's up there. He, but Rook knows like the location of where they are. Yeah, general vicinity. Yeah. Thing is, is that we have three people around this ATV can only fit two. Yeah. So someone has to get left behind, which I would not want because we're out in an open area. <sighs> George Asper puts his hand on your shoulder and says, Do you know where they are? I do. Do you point? No. 
Okay, you just say and I do. I do. Yeah. And I'm, he pushes, I'm trying to keep he, my body tight. I don't want to be like, oh, it's over there. <laughs> just yeah. the get shot he pushes, off. He pushes you towards the ATV and he says, go. What do you mean, go? Don't worry about me. No, George, get on. And I even start to get off. Can an ATV travel a hundred yards in a round? Sure. Okay. I am going... <laughs> As as Dr. Locke gets off, I mm-hmm. am going to take one of my grenades. Is it one of those things where it's like, I have to go to accelerate? Yeah. Oh. Oh, no. Oh. <laughs> oh. This is fantastic. <laughs> oh, my God. Just get on. I can't throw a grenade at a whole football field. No way. No. Yeah. No way. But you could ride this thing maybe halfway there and then throw it. You could do 50 yards. Oh, man. But, oh, man. The caster's working. <laughs> please tell me. Please tell me if I can. Please tell me if I can entertain this, Jay. I would, I, I would I'm ready like, for anything, brother. I would like to accelerate full force at them. And then as I'm, like, finding myself in a good, good spot, I want to pull the grenade and jump out of the ATV to send them a vehicle that's about to explode for an even bigger explosion. Fuck yeah, man. It's totally cool. I'm going to tell you right now. We're going to make the stakes for everybody before we do this. You're going to get on this ATV. This is what you want to do. You're going to want to pin, pull the pin as you get close. Drop it in the basket in the back seat so that it's still on the ATV, you're going to jump off, and hopefully with the speed that you're going with the ATV, it's going to continue into that tree line and blow up. Right? Something that's what like we that. want to do. Yeah, Something yeah. like that. <laughs> I don't um, know if that's a good idea. <laughs> but that, it's, it is a great idea because it's your idea. Not Thank mine. you, Jay. Thank so, you. Talk <laughs> about Caster and Rook taking two different tactics. Very different tactics. <laughs> This uh, is awesome. But, but here's the stakes, my friend. Oh boy. In order to do this, you're going to have to give me a check. You're going to have to give me like a speed check. And I would even allow you to include your military training on top of it. If you fail, it's not going to go well because you're fucking with a grenade right now. And grenades should be respected. <laughs> Rook, Rook, you you respect grenades, don't you? And this is happening in a matter of moments. This is happening in a matter of moments. It's it's, seconds. I have to make a quick decision. Rook has to make a quick decision here. Uh, Seeing Caster just, you know, wave the white wave the white flag of surrender is just gross. Upsetting Rook so much. (laughs) And Uh. seeing Melanie, who they were they were again somewhere. It's it's. They were gonna. They were gonna do things, and she. She's dead now too. I would say that just some, something came over Rook, and I am gonna go ahead and commit to this action here. Oh my God. So I told you this was gonna get hot, ladies and gentlemen. I told you this was gonna get hot. Can you look a little less filled with pleasure? <laughs> wow. So <laughs> this is the best fucking movie I could watch this week. As Doctor Locke uh, slowly like starts to get off of the ATV to bring on George, I am going to accelerate her getting off the ATV process and just hey. turn to the side and like like a cowboy going onto the horse, I'm going to start like Damn. accelerating towards them. What? Oh, man. Yippee-ki-yay, with one hand, with one hand, and then beginning to prep the grenade with the left hand as I'm driving it down. Yes. It, yeah. Let's, let's get this roll. Uh, as, as he speeds past me, I am going to yell, <laughs> It's Wakefield! <laughs> and, and I just <laughs> it's, it's too loud it's too loud man it's too crazy I hate authority oh man <laughs> we have a 43 for the speed check yep got good news and bad news I'm visualizing a 27 I'm visualizing a 27 <laughs> right now oh no <laughs> that's a 63 no failure alright here's what's gonna happen Rook you're racing through this rocky terrain towards a tree line. Melly Devantes, who you've been a war of words with for several days now, is dead. Caster has said that he is going to protect you this time as opposed to the other way around. And Cassidy Garland went into that fucking tree line. 
and all of this is swirling around in your head as you hop on this ATV, you're racing down, you pull that pen and you go to turn to put it in the basket. I rolled an 11. And as you dump this grenade into the basket and go to jump off, you get shot by the rifle. It hits you, freezing you to this ATV as it explodes. Dr. Freya Locke, George Asper, and Caster all witness as Rook goes up in flames. Dear listener, I hope you're enjoying the show. I just wanted to take this moment to tell you about how you can help Out of Depth produce even more cool stuff like the podcast you are listening to right now. For one, you can recommend our show to other folks looking for podcasts. Getting our show into the ears of more people is our number one goal right now. So if you could just recommend it to friends and strangers, leave reviews, all of that would really help us out. If you are in a position to do more than that, you can head over to our Patreon page at patreon.com slash getoutofdepth. It's where you can subscribe at any tier you feel comfortable with for as long as you feel it's worth it. Those funds help us keep the show running, do even more cool projects, and allow us to afford more collaborators to work with. Their time and contributions to our shows are so valuable, and you can help support these efforts by becoming a patron at patreon.com slash get out of depth patrons also have access to bonus material for the shows like character questionnaires my game prep notes and exclusive videos like a post-mortem q a with the analysis complete cast once this series finishes up gail and i have lots of fun plans for the future as we continue to grow our audience and if you want to see them come to fruition please head over to patreon.com slash get out of depth and become a patron today thank you so much for listening holy shit I really appreciate it. Now with that out of the way, let's get back to the show and see what mysteries and terrors our players might uncover next. I mean, a literal blaze of glory. Dr. Freylock, Caster, you all need to make a panic check. I see a 13 from Dave. Is that right? That's barely a success. Well, I rolled an eight. Which is panicky, right? It is panicky. How do I panic, Jay? <laughs> I mean, I I've just, I've just saw Melanie blow. I just saw uh, Martin blow up. Just saw yeah. Melanie blow up. Just saw Rook blow up. Yeah. I'm reading. Get I was supposed to bring. <laughs> I was supposed to bring his children to him, oh, and man. I have utterly failed. So the way you worded it right now is really kind of perfect because your condition is a loss of confidence. You oh, need that's to devastating. That's all I've got is my confidence. Choose <laughs> one of your choose one of your skills, and you're going to no. lose that skill bonus. Okay. Uh, it's going to be chemistry. Oh, man. How does chemistry even work? I just watched Rook die. <laughs> <laughs> Forgot years of schooling in that moment. What do they put in a grenade to make it? Is it nitroglycerin? No, it's something. Ah! I'm just wondering, because we, we, I don't know if, if I heard it correctly, but <laughs> did the ATV at least get to the tree line? <laughs> <laughs> or is it just like, did he go out and... Cause, Otherwise, it's not a blaze of glory. It's just a blaze of underwhelming blaze. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> a blaze, a and that blaze. is the risk you reckless, take when you play Mothership. A reckless blaze. <laughs> a reckless blaze. Where did, it, where did it end up? I'm going to give it to you, man. You, So you all see this explosion happening. It happens right at the tree line. And, Caster, you see Captain Wakefield stumble and fall out of the tree. And he's going to fall and take a little bit of 
damage. Were you Ooh. saying that because the grenade went off, the other grenade went on... off too? Went off too. <laughs> So it was okay, a double so were, grenade. It was a, you had a grenade go off on your chest of all things too, man. <laughs> and a gasoline filled ATV. All right, got it. It was solar powered. Oh, that's right. It was solar powered. Yeah. That's a little better. It's not I any think. powered now. Yeah. So, Caster, you do see Captain Wakefield fall out of the tree as little bits of rook rain down from the sky. Caster is just going to fall down in that moment I think he's just gonna like kind of almost collapse and just be like Rook why don't you ever let anyone protect you Rook and he's just gonna kind of he's just gonna yeah he's just gonna be in kind of despair for that for that few rounds or for that round there uh, before he gets back up and, and not even waving the flag anymore just starts kind of like mopily walking towards the burning wreckage of the ATV. Yeah. Dr. Locke, you see Caster collapse to his knees, upset. Clearly, Rook has put in a lot of effort to take care of you all. I also collapsed to my knees. I just lost three people. I'm the fucking doctor. Yeah, and I don't know what to do. Yeah. It's just me and the android. <laughs> And, George and another doctor. Yeah. yeah. Wow. It's like, like, oh my god. Yeah. It's just... Our party earlier today was twice as big. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, oh like, I'm god. just, I'm absolutely flummoxed and have, I'm wow. kind of stunned trying to figure, think through what to do. So, you all are in a bit of despair. George Asper crouches down next to you, and says, "We have to get up. Get to Caster." <sighs> Okay, okay. I let him help me up. He starts pulling you forward. Caster, you feel George Asper and Freya Locke huddle up next to you. So we're all three together now? Yeah. Okay. I didn't know he'd do that. I wouldn't have let him on if I knew he... If I knew that's what he was going to do. He always was so ready to sacrifice himself for us. He valued us more than himself. What? Where's the gunman? I thought I saw a shot from him over there. It's Wakefield. Wakefield? Wakefield? Just... Yes. He's bearded and grizzled, but it was definitely him. So I'll 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 use my eyes and kind of zoom in on the uh, the tree line again to see if I can see him or Cass or. You don't anything. see him anymore, but. You don't even have to zoom in for this. Dr. Freya Locke, George Asper, and Caster can all see. Cassidy Garland is emerging from the tree line. In her hand looks like a rustic fashioned bow and arrow. Something that she may have made here. And next to her, carrying a spear, is... Sergeant Lee Vi. Oh my god. Is that like a sanity save? That'll make any <laughs> sense. Oh my god. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that is a sanity save. Let's give that sanity save. I'm not even going to argue this. <laughs> yeah. Let's give that sanity save a try. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Oh yay, that's right. I have high sanity. Oh good, because yeah, whenever <laughs> you fail a sanity save, we would all Everybody be Everybody else you just gets in stress, yes. Right. I didn't fail. I got a 32 out of... 45. That's an 87, so that's a failure for me. So another stress. You're now up to 13. Oh. This is getting really fucked up for your logical brain. Yeah. Do they look like ready to attack yeah, us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I put up pans. Yeah, yeah okay. I'll, I'll, I'll put up the white flag again and, and wave Wakefield? it. Wakefield? Lee? C- Cass, is that... Cass, is that... Is that... You all were dead. As you're saying that, from your left, limping out of the woods is a, Rock. a hurt. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, is a uh, yeah, is a is a somewhat wounded uh, Captain Wakefield. Not in the mechanical sense, but in the uh, he just took a fall out of a tree. What? Don't move. Okay. Caster. Yes, Captain. 
come away from them. Why? I'm so happy to see you. Cause, cause why? And Cassidy Garland, when you say cause why, Dr. Freylaw, Cassidy Garland pulls her arrow back a little tighter in the bow. And she says, he said, don't speak. Captain Wakefield says, he did it. Is the Belissa okay? The ship is fine. The crew is not. I know. I know, old friend. Captain, what is happening? This is going to be very difficult to understand, but I want you to come away from those two. Because they're not the people you think they are. They're exactly the people I've come to know over the last few days, Captain. I... I know. I know. I'm begging you, friend. Do you mean them harm, Captain? We'll see. They might be useful. I'm afraid that is an order I cannot obey, Captain. I will not abandon them. Then we're all coming together. Coming together where? To our camp. You've been living here for the last several hundred days? If you call it living, yeah. And right now, you're going to get us off this planet. So you want me to go back to the ship with you now? Yes. Me, Vi, Cassidy Garland, we're leaving. We just saw Sergeant Vi's head decapitated in a box. How do we know that you are actually our friends? I guess I have to explain something to you. There's something here. Something smart, intelligent, beyond anything we know. And it captured some of us. And for I don't know how many days it's been, it experimented on us. It learned everything about us, breaking us down. And it was all trying to make us all over again. Those two aren't Dr. Locke and George Asper. They were made in the lab and he was sending them back to Earth. And I know that you want to protect humans, but I can tell you right now, that's not what they are. And that's not what he was. And he gestures over to the flaming wreckage of the ATV. We can't let them go back. But I, I remember my entire life. I remember everything up until we were about to land. I remember Lee. I remember being in the engine room of the Bellerophon and remember we would read. And, and um, I remember my parents and my dogs and... What are you talking about? You're not real. But I am. She bled. He bled. The real Dr. Freya Locke is sitting in a tube somewhere. It's not you. Then what are we? I've been doing medical scans. We're human. Human DNA with human memories. Human to memories. Human DNA that he got from the real... Dr. Freya Locke. That doesn't make me fake. And I can't believe you. I can't. You know I can't. You know you sound crazy. You know that I just woke up on a ship. And I don't remember the last 300 days. And I'm facing you. And you're telling me that I'm not real. And that's horseshit. Dr. George Asper puts his hand on your shoulder. I do what I always do when a man puts his hand on my shoulder and I Word. <laughs> get out of it. <laughs> sure. Whether or not you believe what he says is real, Dr. Locke, we have no other choice but to listen. I'll listen. But he needs to understand that he can't define a person. 
I have spent my whole life being told that I am not real myself. Whatever you may think of Dr. Locke and George Asper, they are real. There's just a debate if they're the original. How can you prove what you say? Is there anything that would be different about Dr. Locke or George to even verify what you told us? Barry Camden escaped. Barry's dead. That wasn't really Barry. And he realized that he wasn't really Barry. How did he realize? When we found him, he said he had seen the real Barry. They're all in tubs. And that... That dome... I think it drove... Barry too, a little crazy. But he said that we can't go back. If we've seen Cass, and if we've seen Lee... Then wouldn't they be in tubes back there? We got away early. We've just been living with the clones for over 200 days. How do you know that you got away? I don't know that I didn't get away. How do you know that there's not a Wakefield back there, a Vi, a Garland? How do you know that that wasn't implanted in your brain? How do you know that you're the original versions of yourself? Whoa. Cool, guys. Well, now these people have to make sanity (laughs) checks. Because they were fairly certain it was them. This is crazy. They all seem to have dealt with this question for many days. Okay. And yet they are very certain that they are the originals. Of course, being able to convince you otherwise if you're coming at it from this angle, is going to be very difficult. But they seem content with their position, and you just being not agreeable to it. Captain, why did you find it necessary to kill Melanie? I was trying to get him. Him? Rook. Why? Because he's the one who's dangerous. Why is he dangerous? Because he was the only one amongst you who's even had any military training, that's why. When's the last time you saw Martin Sapp? A long time. He seems to think that there's a god on this planet. Yeah. What do you call what you think lives here? I ain't got a name for it. I just know it's bad. And I wish I'd never come to this damn planet. Can I scan you? Or actually show you how to use the medical scanner and you scan your cells and I see the results. Yeah. And I take it out and I start to scan them. And I say, I've noticed some anomalies in our team. Mostly we have an accelerated cell regeneration. We heal very fast. If you have it, I know you're not original. Gail, if this comes back negative... What effect would that have on Dr. Freylock? I know. Captain, do you know how we ended up back on that ship? He put you there. He wants to send you back. He's experimented and had different versions. There was some of them came out all fucked up. You probably seen one of them. We killed it. Good. We thought it was you. In a lot of pain. Barry Camden, the clone, got Cassidy out. Why? She was the only one available, the closest one. He just picked one. I don't know. He wasn't in his right mind. Was Martin a clone? Or has he always just been out there? That's Martin. Okay. A lot of bad things have happened up here, and I feel weird even talking to you like you're actually Dr. Freylock, but... I am a person. If you say. 
is cast her a person. As he said. I don't know if I know the definition anymore. Why have you been living out here and not at the Haven? They send the hounds. They? It. Whatever. Oh. Does it... Do you all need some food? Yeah. We've been eating fruit and... I get an MRE nuts. out of my bag. It's strange fruit and took a while for our body to adjust to it, but I mean, there's stuff out here to eat. How's Lee's burns after the attack we read about? They're okay, and you can see Lee has, like, scarring. Acid scarring. How do, what do the readings come out to be? They're... They don't have that same anomaly that you do. Well, George, well, Castor, they don't have that same anomaly. So you believe what they say? I don't know. I'm open. A scientist should always be open to new possibilities. But I know who I am. If I was programmed to be that way, it's the same as you being programmed to be who you are. Don't let anyone ever tell you you're not a lie. That you're not real. Same to you, Castor. Castor's gonna go to the wreckage of the ATV and see if he can find uh, Rook's dog tags. He'll take some looking. He'll take some searching. But, yeah, you find them. Uh, He's just gonna say softly, Man is not made for defeat. A man can be destroyed, but never defeated. As Castor's coming back. So he's not dead. He's alive somewhere. We cut to a dark tunnel where there are several pods filled with a light blue liquid floating in one is Dr. Freya Locke floating in another is George Asper and floating in another is Rook Rook the liquid in this tube starts to drain out and you are feeling this viscous fluid emit from your throat and you fall down weak in this slippery muck the glass case of this pod opens up I take a breath you take a breath it comes hard you feel phlegm and and maybe some more of this fluid in your throat and you expel it in a fit of coughing I lower the pod uh, door close it shut and I would like to look at my look at my reflection you look at the reflection you see yourself your hair is a little longer. You've got some stubble. You may have shaved recently, but it's grown back again. And in the reflection, you see behind you this metal figure that looks like a collection of piping and gears. It is a robot, and you have seen this robot multiple times over your long stay here in the lab. And every time you come out, it usually means pain. The robot grabs you with a strong hand on the back of your neck, just like it has multiple times before. And it starts to guide you towards the facility where they make your clone. As I am being dragged over, I'm going to look over to the robot and just say, so how'd it happen? It never responds. You just hear whirring and clicks and beeps. Its eyes are these, it's just a strip of crystal, ridged crystal, where its eyes would be. And when you look at them, they reflect the light back at you, almost piercingly so. I like to imagine he ate a carrot stick and started eating too fast. And it got stuck in his throat with a little piece that was too big. And he probably choked to death. Maybe not. But I like to imagine it. The robot leads you over to a table where there are manacles for your feet and hands. And you know you're supposed to lay here and get in position while these manacles close over your limbs. I'm going to be slow with it. As as the things open up, I'm going to just take a moment and just... 
I curiously the mechanisms that I'm supposed to ensnare myself in. And I'm going to just wait a little bit just to see how the robot responds if I take too long. If I don't get into this contraption. Its head, you can't tell if it's literally staring at you. But its head is facing you. It's completely still, cold and dead. You can just hear the ticking inside of it. I look back up at the crystal eyes and I just mutter underneath my breath, you better make me look really, really good next time. I mean, I know it's, yeah, just make me something different. Just just the smallest change. And I step into the uh, attachments. The clamps come down over your wrists and ankles. And from the ceiling, as the bed tilts backwards, you see a dozen different mechanical arms descend upon you, each one carrying scalpels and needles, and they start to go to work on you over familiar scars, extracting tissue and flesh. This is painful? It is terribly painful. I like to imagine that Ruck struggles with the pain at first, but maybe towards the latter half of this procedure, a small smile creeps over his face as it happens. Sure. As the arms are retracting, you see two of the arms collide with one another, as if one of the the mechanisms haven't been oiled, a loose joint in the arm, and they collide. And the scalpel in one of these arms clatters on the floor. The robot lifts its arms up to resituate these two mechanical arms from the ceiling. And as it's doing that, those mechanical arms click into place and your manacles open up. And for a split second, this robot has its hands in the air and is holding on to these mechanisms in the ceiling and you're completely free to make a decision. I'm going to go towards the scalpel, pick it up, and I'm going to hold it to my own neck, staring the, um, the robot in the eye. Okay. The robot stares back at you and after a beat, you hear this high-pitched pulse start to emit from its head like a siren that's just one tone and it pierces your ears I want you to make a body save and this is a body save that is going to really dictate where this goes okay no pressure you're really throwing me here into the deep edge I don't know what's going on I don't know what's going on do do I have any memory of like I just, I just been in Cairo this entire time. I, like, what's the last thing I remember, Jay? <sighs> Coming out and having this procedure done. That's all. Several times. That's the last thing you remember. But you remember that time that you were in a tent and you were writing in a diary that you thought you were the last one left. And I woke up and I saw the other and pods and. And you remember this robot standing over you. You remember this hovercraft, for lack of a better term, that escorted you back to this dome. And you remember being walked down that hallway and seeing Cassidy Garland, Barry Camden, Dr. Freya Locke, and Dr. George Asper before you took your place next to them. Okay, well, I'll just make the body save now. Failure with a 64. You drop the scalpel. Yeah. As your head starts to ring. And the robot, and I'm going to roll, lunges at you to subdue you. And I also failed. Okay, it's a battle now. It is. What do you want to do? Is this like a robot like caster? Like 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 similar E? Yeah. Okay. It looks, it's just... it looks less uh less good. <laughs> like like a model of caster from from like a I don't know, a hundred years ago. 
I see. Okay. I can't fight a robot. <laughs> so wait, but, but you're completely naked. Your chest yeah. is bleeding. And I just, yeah, I'm in an immense amount of pain already. Uh, yeah. I'm going to run. I guess you're I'm going to run. run. I'm going to try to create some distance here and get more of my bearings because Rook doesn't know what the fuck's going on. Yeah. Give me a speed and I'm going to roll speed and I just need you to beat mine. Can I add, or can I add athletics? Get lower. Yeah. 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 Definitely athletics. Failure with a 47. Your failure is less of a failure than my failure because I failed really bad. So How we, bad? We were, I, I rolled a 59. Oh. So we were doing like like blackjack rules. Yeah. Yeah. For that one. And it got like a chase sequence and it, it's going after you and you're ducking it down this hallway. You run past your friends. You s- slip. You do like that risky business slide yeah, 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 yeah. by the door. You see these gateways that have all these like rounded shapes that sometimes become very jagged, almost like donut shaped uh, hallways with like pointy jagged edges. What am I doing? Uh... <laughs> and there's another exit out of the pod room. You don't know where that goes. You can see Dr. Frey a lot. Who's in the George pod room Asper, again? It's Asper. Melanie Devantes. Melanie? I'm. Is it. Is there like a emergency release button to? You wouldn't know where it was. Okay. There's nothing um, like there's nothing American or or Earth like about like where's the big red button that I press? <laughs> no arrows pointing here. Yeah. Release okay. valve here. <laughs> I'm still in panic mode. I think the robot's gonna kill me, so I'm gonna just keep running. Keep running. You keep running, and a door closes behind you. Okay. And you see this room that has a large stairwell that leads up. And on the walls around you, these these walls extend 30 feet up to the ceiling. That's how high up these stairs go. And on these walls, you can see these drawings on the walls like portraits of a creature with pale white features long extended face that looks humanoid pointy cheekbones like some kind of ruler of a kingdom I'm gonna acknowledge that and just head up the stairs you head up the stairs, and at the top of these stairs, I mean, you are running as hard as you can, and there are these doors, these huge gated black doors that shimmer as you get close to them, and they gently open in front of you as you approach. And for the first time in a very long time, you see daylight. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> I, I exit. You, t- you run, and about 20 feet after you exit these doors, you hear them slam shut. I need you to make another body save. No athletics? Not this time. I filled every roll today, honestly. Yeah. <sighs> Failure with a 74. Your body tenses up, and you start to hear this echo that sounds like a warped version of musical notes and it fills your mind to where you can see nothing but sound and a voice penetrates through these notes and it doesn't speak English but you understand what it's saying to you and it says 